Today, we're diving into the world of real-time operating systems, often called RTUAs. We'll explore their design and how they handle scheduling in environments where timing is everything. So, what exactly is a real-time operating system? And RTUAs is a specialized operating system crafted to process data and events with very precise timing requirements and predictable behavior. Key characteristics of RTUAs are deterministic timing behavior, guaranteed response times, priority-based scheduling, minimal interrupt latency, and predictable resource management. Real-time systems can be categorized into three main types based on their timing constraints. First, we have hard real-time systems. In these systems, missing a deadline is considered a complete system failure. Timing constraints must be met under all circumstances. Examples include aircraft flight control systems, automotive airbag controllers, industrial safety systems, and medical life support devices. Next, we have soft real-time systems. In these systems, missing deadlines is undesirable but tolerable. The system will continue to function, although with reduced performance. Examples include multimedia streaming applications, online reservation systems, video conferencing, and mobile phone applications. Then, there are firm real-time systems where results delivered after the deadline have zero utility, but occasional misses don't cause system failure. Examples include financial trading systems, telecommunication switching, virtual reality systems, and some industrial control systems. Let's explore the core design principles that guide the creation of real-time operating systems. The first principle is determinism. System behavior must be predictable and consistent. Operations must complete within specified time constraints, regardless of system load or other conditions. Next is responsiveness. The system must respond to external events within guaranteed timeframes. This includes handling interrupts, processing inputs, and generating outputs with minimal latency. Priority management is also important. Tasks must be assigned appropriate priorities based on their timing requirements and system criticality. The scheduler must ensure higher priority tasks can take precedence over lower priority ones. Finally, resource management. Efficient allocation and deallocation of system resources like memory, CPU, and input or output is crucial to prevent resource starvation, deadlocks, and priority inversion issues that could compromise timing guarantees. Now let's explore the different states a task can be in during its life cycle within an RTUs. There are five primary states. First, created. The task is created but not yet ready to run. Resources are allocated, but initialization is pending. Next is ready. The task is ready to execute, but is waiting for its turn to use the central processing unit or CPU. It sits in a ready queue, managed by the scheduler. Running signifies that the task is currently executing on the central processing unit. Only one task can be in this state per CPU core at any given moment. Blocked is when a task is waiting for a resource or event, such as input or output, a semaphore or a timer. It cannot proceed until this condition is met. Lastly, suspended means that the task execution is temporarily halted by another task or by itself and requires an explicit resume command to continue. Let's explore various scheduling algorithms used in real-time operating systems. First is Rate Monotonic Scheduling, or RMS. It uses static priority assignment based on task periods. Tasks with shorter periods receive higher priorities. The advantages of RMS are that it is optimal for periodic tasks, simple to implement and provides predictable behavior. The disadvantages of RMS are a CPU utilization limit of approximately 69% and that it's not optimal for aperiodic tasks. Another algorithm is Earliest Deadline First, or EDF. It uses dynamic priority assignment based on absolute deadlines. Tasks with earlier deadlines receive higher priorities. The advantages of EDF are optimal CPU utilization, which can be up to 100%, works well with mixed task types and provides better responsiveness. 
The disadvantages of EDF are a more complex implementation, higher runtime overhead and unpredictability in overload conditions. Next, we will discuss Deadline Monotonic Scheduling, or DMS. It uses static priority assignment based on relative deadlines. Tasks with shorter deadlines receive higher priorities. The advantages of DMS are that it handles tasks with deadlines that are not equal to periods, simple static priority assignment, and predictable behavior. The disadvantages of DMS are lower CPU utilization than EDF and is not optimal for all task sets. Finally, we have round robin with priority. It combines priority scheduling with time slicing. Tasks at the same priority level share CPU time in a round robin fashion. The advantages of round robin with priority are fair CPU distribution, making it good for mixed criticality systems and prevents starvation. The disadvantages of round robin with priority are context switching overhead, where time slice selection is critical and it's not optimal for hard real-time tasks. Let's address a common challenge in RTUs, the priority inversion problem. Priority inversion occurs when a high-priority task is indirectly preempted by a lower-priority task, effectively inverting the expected priority relationship. This typically happens when a high-priority task is blocked while waiting for a resource that is held by a low-priority task, which itself is preempted by a medium-priority task. There are several solutions to this problem. The first is the priority inheritance protocol. When a low-priority task blocks a high-priority task, it temporarily inherits the high-priority task's priority until it releases the shared resource. The next is the priority ceiling protocol. Each shared resource is assigned a priority ceiling equal to the highest priority of any task that may lock it. When a task acquires a resource, its priority is raised to the ceiling priority. The final solution is immediate priority ceiling protocol. A task's priority is immediately raised to the ceiling priority when it acquires a resource, regardless of whether higher priority tasks are waiting. A real-world example of this is during the Mars Pathfinder mission in 1997, the spacecraft experienced system resets due to a priority inversion problem in its real-time operating system. NASA engineers solved the issue by enabling the priority inheritance protocol remotely. Now let's delve into the various mechanisms that enable tasks to communicate and synchronize with each other in an RTUS environment. The first one we will be discussing is semaphores. Semaphores are synchronization primitives that control access to shared resources and signal events between tasks. Another communication method is message queues. Message queues are first-in, first-out data structures that allow tasks to exchange messages asynchronously. Next, we have shared memory. Shared memory is comprised of memory regions accessible by multiple tasks, allowing direct data exchange without copying. Finally, there are event flags. Event flags are bit patterns that signal the occurrence of events, allowing tasks to wait for multiple events simultaneously. Now, let's discuss memory management within an RTUs. Memory management presents unique challenges, including limited memory resources in embedded systems, fragmentation issues with long-running systems, deterministic allocation and deallocation times, and the constant need to avoid memory leaks in critical applications. There are common strategies to use such as static allocation, where all memory is allocated at compile time. Another strategy is pool-based allocation, which uses fixed size memory blocks. Stack-based allocation provides automatic memory management and region-based allocation, which are grouped allocations with bulk free. A very common strategy is to use memory pool allocation. Benefits of memory pools include deterministic allocation time, which is constant, no fragmentation issues, simplified memory management, and efficient for fixed size allocations. Now let's explore some popular real-time operating systems that are widely used in the industry. FreeRTUS is an open source RTUS designed for microcontrollers and small microprocessors. Its key features include a small memory footprint, high portability, and it offers AWS Internet of Things integration. VxWorks, a commercial RTUS developed by Wind River Systems for embedded systems. VxWorks is known for its high reliability, 
and is often used in aerospace and defense applications. It's also PUSIX compliant. QNX Neutrino is a commercial microkernel based RTUS developed by BlackBerry QNX. Its key features include a microkernel architecture, fault tolerance, and it is commonly used in automotive applications. RT Linux is a real time extension to the Linux kernel, providing hard real time capabilities. Its key features include Linux compatibility, a dual kernel approach, and an open source ecosystem. Zephyr is a scalable open source RTIS for connected, resource constrained devices. Key features include it being a Linux foundation project, having an Internet of Things focus and extensive hardware support. Integrity is a commercial RTIS from Green Hills Software designed for safety critical systems. Its key features include a separation kernel, do 178B certification, and use in medical and automotive applications. The choice of RTUAs depends on application requirements, hardware constraints, certification needs, and development ecosystem. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit codelucky.com for more such useful content.